What's up my century gunnets, it's the Sunshine here, so this is my review of Monday Night Raw for the 12th of May 1997. Before the start of the review, um, the noise is at the background, it's just the wind from outside, I open the window, it's starting to get a little bit stuffy. It's not hot, you know, just like, feel like open the window. Anyway, so back to this review, so this show was in a place called Newark, Delaware. So, this is the first Raw after Cold Day in Hell. So, Raw kicked off with the Hart Foundation, that is Bret Hart, the Loose Cannon, Brian Pillman, Jim, the Anfield Nine Hart, and the WWF Tag Team Champions at the time, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith. Owen Hart is the Intercontinental Champion, and Davey Boy Smith is the European champion. So Brett could uh, open this promo with, you know, basically says, I surrounded by the best that the WWF has to offer, referring to the Heart Foundation. Uh, yeah, basically he's put over the Heart Foundation because, you know, Owen is Brett's younger brother. Um, Neinhard and Davey, they are basically the brother-in-laws. Because, you know, Davey's married to Brett's um, sister Diana. I don't know who's, um, I know like uh, Nineheart is the father of Natalia from WWE Today. In, our, in the current product. Don't know who, you know, I don't know who the name of her Natalia's mom is. You know, she appeared on, you know, the Heart, found, uh, the Heart Family's um, documentary. She appeared on a few episodes of Toll, Toll Divas, so I can't remember. So just write down in the comment section below. Um, and then you got uh, Brian Pillman, who is you know he's basically you know trained with the Hart Family Dungeon. I don't know he wrestled in uh, Stampede Wrestling, the old Canadian Stampede r run by Brett's dad uh, Stu Hart. I don't know before going to you know WCW, then ECW, and now in the WWF. Um, you know back then now it's uh, WWE. Anyway, so. Yeah, you know, Brett said like um they can go through the mouth in hell or was it the mouth of hell to fight the uh, the devil. Um, breathing was it breathing the same air or pumping the same air as me or something like that, and also pumping my blood with their heart. So and also once again going after going really bashing Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, called him a rotting, stinking hyena. Called it. He called him a, a real American hero. Something about like you know, wounded was it wounded over Texas um, cliches with farmyard overtones. You know, I don't know what he means about farmyard overtones. He's not like he's having sex with farmyard animals. I don't know. So and also called him a loser because he didn't win the WWE title the previous night. And what kind of guy, not, was it, I think he said about what kind of the guy, I think he said, referring to him about an infidel, uh person, you know, a guy in a wheelchair, I can't do no, nothing with the wheelchair. Basically, like, after Austin lost the WWE title match with The Undertaker and then the Heart Foundation beating down both Austin, mostly beat down The Undertaker and then Brett, oh, not Brett, uh, Austin, not Brett, off his wheelchair to get the crutch. And we'll get to Austin's part um, a bit later on, so... So, he also called The Undertaker a, another American heel... Uh, not American heel. <laughs> the American hero. And it said about, we're gonna get we're gonna get all the... Um, I said about, we're gonna grab... I think he says, again, the title. Right over there with the glimmering titles that the heart found it. Heart found, sorry, I'm speaking too fast. I'm gonna repeat, repeat myself again. So, yeah, he said about, like... Coming over with all the glam it was it the glam was it the glamour belts that the Hot Foundation Hot Foundation has. Sorry, I'm stumbling by the way. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twisting moment. So he, the, what what he referring to? We're gonna get all the belts and the kind of hat they end up having all the belts. You know, like actually like Owen went on to lose the IC. The, actually, the Owen and Bulldog end up losing. You know, the IC. And tag team titles to Austin and Michaels, and you know, and Owen went on, went on to lose the IC title 
to Austin at that year's SummerSlam. So you can say all the belts, something like that, you know, you don't get that in today's product that in, the, in WWE or, or maybe in AEW, you know, a faction to get all the golds, you know, like, re, you know, in recent years in AEW, you had the Elite, you know, Omega is the, um, the AEW World Champion, this is last year, last year, by the way, and the, the Bucks are the, um, Tag Team Champion, so, anyway, let's get back to this review, so I'm going off the topic, so, anyway, so, Brett said about shocking, got uh, shocking news, and he said to the, he said to the fans, like, and also he said, like, they cheer for scum, you know, basically they like, cheer, basically he said about, like, Americans like violent, blood and violence, that's one of his other promos, um, later on in this review, or, 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 or actually in the show, so why I kept saying review, sorry, it's a bit of a tongue twisted moment, so, anyway, so, he said about, like, he said, like, um, it's gonna be, I got something about surprise if you people shut up. You know, it's about like, and then also Brett, like, you know, I think they were trying to like go home to Brett and the Hart Foundation. They were trying for Austin. Don't think they tried the U. I think they did try the USA a bit. Yeah, Austin, USA, and then go home, and then Brett just like fed up and left. So it's not like, it's not the last time we see Brett Hart on this show. So anyway, it was a good promo. Not the best one. It was a good promo. You know. Yeah, you know, it was basically just like putting over the Hart Foundation, bashing Austin as usual. He's not like bashing Austin, you know, they're, they're good friends in real life, you know, you know, they're like working together, you know, Brett's just, it's kayfabe, you know, he's not literally bashing America, you know, it's just part of his new gimmick, you know, he's, the baby face Brett Hart was getting stale, Brett turning as a, Brett as a heel, you know, as a breath of fresh air, you know, I think he was, yeah, he was a heel before, you know, the, of the original Heart Foundation days as a tag team in, in the 1980s, you know. I think he was done anything as a babyface. Now he's, now he's a heel, so. Anyway, so moving on to the first match of the show. This is the first match, the first round of the 1997 King of the Ring tournament. We got Hunter Hearst Helmsley. That's the future Triple H with China in his corner. Taking on Ahmed Johnson. So this is just a squash match, you know. Uh, uh, Hunter has some offense, but it's the whole bulk of the match is between like Armour Johnson dominating um, Helmsley. So you got to have this some moments you had to like um, not you had uh, Armour Johnson looking at China. So anyway, and speaking of China, so in the end the match ended in disqualification when China hit uh, Armour Johnson in the back with the chair that caused a DQ and then self proclaimed causing Triple H. The King of the Ring tournament that he went on to win, uh, that year's King of the Ring. So it's kind of like, why they did that? You know, it just made China like a dumbass, and they didn't do. Because uh, at this moment in time, I think Helmsley was still he was kind of like dead in the water at this point. So yeah, he's been in the company about two years. You know, he debuted in 1995. So far, he didn't really. So he never had like a true. Breakout performance, yeah. I don't count that that the hog pen match, you know. But I think like he got, I feel like he had that hog pen, um, not hog pen. He had that breakout performance at SummerSlam the following year. That's another story for another time, in my opinion. But so far, I think that I think his gimmick is a bit cheesy, you know. But um, he'll become the he got over a little bit over when he was the DX Triple H, you know, in ninety seven and ninety eight. So anyway, so afterwards, you know, Ahmed Johnson trying to go after Helmsley, trying to. Basically locked um, uh, Ahmed Johnson with a headlock, you know. I never knew China has, like, a tattoo. She has, like, a tattoo right in her back, back of her shoulder. It's some Chinese symbols. I never knew that China had a tattoo, you know. And she looks big, you know. She looks a little bit muscular in her early years, in her, in her only run in the company. And then in the, in the final few years, you know, after she broke away from Triple H, you know, ditched the, the, the you know, the fake tan because in reality China is pale. She's a bit slimmed down a bit, you know, and she was wearing a little bit of makeup. You know, she, you know, I think people criticize China because, you know, she's a he-man, but I think in reality with makeup, she, China is a good woman, a good looking woman, you know. Um, anyway, so that was it. So, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, Hunter ended up going back to the tournament and went on to win it, but it has to do with Armand Johnson, you know, getting hurt, and also you end up being part of the nation, so anyway. That's another story for another time, so the opener is just a squash match. Moving on. 
So and then we got Vince McMahon interviewing uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So Austin, he brings a little bit about his uh, match. He also told Vince to suck up to him. And said about he grabs like he he got he, he's holding one of Brett's um crutches because Brett had like still recovering from the knee injury, so Brett uh sorry not Brett uh, Austin says about like if you want if, if you want it back you, you if you want this crutch from me he said about roll down roll your ass down and see what look you has and also I'm, I'm trying to keep the, get to the key points man otherwise it's gonna be a very long. You know, review and try to keep my reviews about 30, 20 to, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes. Anyway, so he kind of revering the Heart Foundation as snakes, you know, snake. He didn't really say snake in the grass. You know, he said, like, the fastest way to kill a snake is chop up the, the chop up, oh, chop up the head. Sorry, a bit of a time the moment. He said to Fence, have you seen a snake in person? And Fence says, um, I refuse to comment it. Comment it, and then uh, and Austin called Vince a chicken, because at the time they're not like feuding, you know. I think the plan their rivalry, I think the one segment what really planted their rivalry was Austin stunned Vince. I think it was the um, I think it's the raw after Austin, uh, Owen broke his neck. That's another a topic for another time. So anyway, so basically he called Brad. You know, you know, you said you're a hero. You think you want the people want want you to be. Yeah, he called Brett a liar, you're a liar, you're a Judas priest, and a, was it, a, was it a piece of trash? I almost say, I, I, I almost forgot it, yeah, piece of trash, because, yeah, yeah, you can't really say shit, you know, you can't, you know, it's, I don't know, they do script it at the time, anyway, so he called, yeah, he called Brett, like, I'm going to revert, repeat myself, yeah, he called Brett a, like, a liar, a Judas priest, and a piece of trash. And he said about, like, when I'm not going to go, first of all, I'm not going to go for the head of the snake. You know, he's going to go for the snake, his ass. That's Brian Pillman. He said about, like, you know, I cripple your carcass. You know, I carry you in the bush leagues. Because at the time, everyone knows the story. Because Austin and Pillman were a tag team. The Hollywood Blondes in WCW. And it was something about when the um the bell goes, your ass is mine. So I don't think they got that. I don't think Austin and, and Pillman had that match. I don't know if they had the match in WCW, but not in the WWF. You know, everyone knows their plans for that rivalry in '98. Unfortunately, that was gone. That was like cancelled due to Brian Pillman died in later on in 1997 in October. You know, that was I think it was the night before the Bad Blood pay per view. You know, um, that's never. St we'll get to bad blood later on in the year. So, anyway, a uh, good promo for Austin. So, and then we got um another match. This is another squash match, by the way. <laughs> we got Leaf Cassidy, that is Al Snow, taking on Scott Pusky. Scott Pusky is the son of the. I don't say late at the time. I, think, I don't know if he's still alive or not. Um. He's the son of Ivan Pusky. I'm looking him up. He was a WWF. I think it was a WWF champion or WWWF stands for at the time it was stand for World was it World Worldwide Wrestling Federation, and also he competed in the the second ever World Strongest Man contest in 1978. So the match is just a squash match, you know. Uh, Pusky hit Cassidy with a I think it was a German suplex, and then. Cassidy trying to, you know, trying to cheat shot and attack Pusky after this match, you know, and Pusky, um, guys, uh, got a uh, leg up onto Cassidy, and, and actually Cassidy kind of shouted, you know, Al Snow shouted, like, I won this match, you know, and I think, like, JR says, what are you talking about, you didn't win this match, and Scott Pusky, uh, it's a shame, they, they're trying to build him up, you can tell it didn't really pan out for him. You don't see a lot of successful, like, some some of these second-generation wrestlers, they end up have a good careers, like The Rock, Randy Orton, Cody, you can say Cody Rose and Charlotte Flair, but some, some like, DBRC and Sean Stasiak, they never, like, pan out that well, so. And, and Pusky, he looks like it has a good physique. So, anyway, and, yeah, it was just another squash match, and one squash match to another, yeah, we got another squash match, folks. Another squash match. We got LOD, the former Road Warriors. I'm going to call them the Road Warriors. 
Um, yeah, Legion of Doom. Uh, don't mind. Don't get me wrong. I don't understand why they never call them the Road Warriors in the WWE. You know, they just call them the Legion of Doom. The Legion of Doom is basically the villain group from the DC Universe. I don't know. Anyway, so they take on PG-13. Who is PG-13? That is, um, JC Ice and Wolfie D represent the Nation of Domination. This was a bona fide squash match. Um, try to keep it short and simple. Yeah, uh, you know, PG-13, you know, um, um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, JC Ice and Wolfie D, they got like some offense. I think they kind of did like an assisted power drive onto Hawk, and Hawk it didn't sell it. So, in the end, you know, the Road Warriors hit the Doomsday Device on JC Ice and Wolfie D for the win. They end up getting kicked out from the group. I think they end up going to ECW, or maybe I was, I was wrong. So, anyway, so that was the, yeah, that was the, uh, the third. Squash match, you know, why are they doing three squash matches in a row in this show? I don't get it, I don't want to get into it, so... And I think that there's another one. Jesus Christ, man. I'll get to my final thoughts of this Raw at the end of this review. So, anyway, so we got Mankind. Um, Basically, brings about, he said about like bringing the fourth to The Undertaker with a great war of, a great war of fame. So, fame, sorry. <coughs> Sorry, a bit of a tongue twisting moment. My my apologies. A great war of flame and the fire uh, circle rounds his head like a reef. He said about like a, what his goal is Pony Scar the uh the Undertaker. He fails to succeed that, you know. And he brings up, you know, um and also he play, his theme music is playing throughout the whole of the promo segment. It so it got a little bit annoying. You know, I understand why, but I like theme, uh, Mick Foley's theme music, by the way. You know, the Mankind theme music from when he came, you know, 96, 97, but um, before the car crash theme music he has, you know, 1999 to beyond. But um, anyway, so he brings up, he brings up, you know, Paul Bearer, you know, says, The Undertaker, you know, if you got a problem, I'm a big boy, take it out on me. He said about, like, you know, you took out a man that took you in, and, um... You ruined him physically, physically um, for the rest of his life, referring to Paul Bearer. And he said about, you know, he was self comment about his appearance, show, show some respect. Paul Bearer is wearing, like, a, a really bandage around his face. You can tell, like, the old version of Paul Bearer with the white skin, with the dark hair and the moustache, and go, oh, yes! You can tell, like, he's, um... His gimmick is starting to get stale. He end up ditching, you know, the face paint, the dark hair, the mustache. He end up like shaved off his mustache. He end up great, but he end up with the stra I think he had stra strawberry, strawberry blonde hair, and speaking with his normal voice. Um, he said about like the bond has been seed. Um, you know, you sin my face, put me in the hospital, and um. And also, he said about, he give Undertaker one more chance to be with him. Otherwise, he said about, like, um, I think Mankind says you could see that a dark secret, you know, and the Undertaker, all he knew. And he said about, like, I made this, I made the secret in front of the grave site with your mother and father. You know, this is, uh, this is going to be a spoiler alert, by the way. So, by the way, this is the start of the accusation storyline between Paul Bearer and the Undertaker. Bearer. You know, you know, really accused the Undertaker, of, like killing his parents and self-proclaimed brother, in the uh, fire in the funeral home, uh, when he was a kid that led up to the debut of Kane later on in the year. By the way, so, and um, he said about like you know, you know, if you do not accept this final offer, you heard Undertaker, you're gonna get hurt and better and mankind says, you know, you'll be worn Undertaker, have a nice day. You know, Mac, one of Mick Foley's catchphrase, have a nice day. And yeah, it was a good promo by the way, with both Mankind and Paul Bearer. So I think that's yeah, yeah, and then then we got another interview segment with Vince McMahon interviewing uh interviewing Farouk, and Farouk is now the number one contender for the WWF title against The Undertaker, that's King at King of the Ring, I think it was King of the Ring, uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> so, 
I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it short and simple. Get to the key points. So basically, he said to like Vince McMahon, it doesn't. I I don't have to tell you what I'm feeling. It, it, this is racist, by the way. Not super racist. He didn't like you know Farouk saying the N word and the C word, calling with the uh, calling another black man the C. I'm gonna spell it C double uh, O N. Don't not gonna say it, but um. He said about what's the last time a black man holds a becoming the World Wrestling Federation champion. It brings up like Ahmed Johnson become the first black ice uh, intercontinental champion, and Bobo Brazil becoming the United States champion. I don't know that all. I think it said United States champion because I don't. I'm not. I think he is. I, I need to look that up. So it brings about no more like marching to marching for the, marching in a parade. Going on a radio uh, show to complain, and I, th I think things point out very well. It's got it's got nothing to do with being black. So basically, you know, what Farouk Sen says, you know, he's been like discriminate for, for his skin color. You know, it's this is nine nine seven by the way. Things change right now in twenty twenty uh, twenty twenty uh, two. You know, every wrestler, some wrestlers who's black or Hispanic. Most like like you had um like the first black champion in WWE you know the first black WWE champions Kofi Kingston and Bobby Lashley, um like Sasha Banks and Naomi are the you know are black you know they're the women's tag team champions you know. You know yeah you had the you know that was like right now for back then it was like breaking the ra racist uh barrier, um <clears throat> so and also stuff about like you know I'm not here to be a role model, those black kids you know. Had the same rage and anger where I'm feeling, feeling, you know. You know, action. I think it's action it needs to be need, it needed. Um. So anyway, I can't remember the promo, but it was a good promo, by the way. It's a bit. You're not gonna see that. Pro, no one can will do a promo based about their skin in today's WWE. You know, in the, today's product, man. You know, it's PG, but um, it was a good promo for Farouk. Um, so he's basically, you know, basically I'm going to recap, you know, said about like, um, action, I think it says action needs to be needed. Um, no, no, was it no means necessary? I'm trying to say no means necessary, man. I'm trying to remember the promo that well, kind of remember, so I'm glad I rem managed to remember. So basically it was like a promo, you know, it's not, yeah, he, when, he never went on to win the day they F champion. Yeah, I know he was the first black WCW champion in WCW, but that was a different ball, that was a different ball game. When it was Farouk, I don't think he was world champion material. He's more like he's more like a mid card guy, but that was a one off when he was the black world champion in WCW. So, so moving on to the next match, we got Savio Vega taking on uh, the Undertaker. Savio Vega is represent the Nation of Domination. This is a squash match, you know, Savio Vega has um, some offense, but Undertaker hit, I think he hit the choke slam, about to win, but instead the rest of the nation attacked the Undertaker, that caused a DQ, and that just building up for Root to face the Undertaker at King of the Ring, so why? Um, why are they doing a lot of squash matches on the show? Like I said, we'll get to the final rating of the show later on, of this, basically the end of the end of this review so <clears throat> so so moving on to another squash match folks so we got RVD Rob Van Dam taking on Jeff Hardy holy shit I was shocked and then you got Jer Jerry Lawler came out of his commentary area crapping on ECW there was a lot of ECW fans it's funny this is not in Philadelphia this is in Delaware there were a lot of, um, I think there were in the match between RVD and Jeff Hardy there were a lot of ECW chance so not Heavily, but silently. So basically, uh, Lola says about basically running down ECW, extremely crappy wrestling, and RVD, um, RVD cut a promo said about like ECW are low budget, low talented wrestlers who doesn't have the ex the same extreme talent as him. So that was a good promo by RVD. You know, RVD is not known for his promo, his mic skills. He's known for you know becoming a good wrestler. So, um. I think at the time ECW is about to do. I think it's before or even after. You know, ECW did that first ever pay per view. That was a uh, very legal ninety seven. So, 
And yeah, and speaking of ECW, I need to get back reviewing these ECW shows, you know, the supercar shows. You know, the next one is, was it, Hard, was it Hardcore Heaven 94? So that'll be, probably, that'll, that'll be in the first week of June, by the way. That'll be in June, you know, stay tuned for that. So, I'm trying to get back on, on track reviewing some ECW shows. So, anyway, so, another squash match, you know, RVD hit Jeff Hardy with the, um, the five-star frog splash, but, um... He hit the, in the end, he hit Hardy with the corkscrew moonsault for the win. And it's funny that, you know, Hardy, you know, because at the time, Jeff Hardy was a jobber. He's not part of the roster. You know, it's really funny, like, RVD and Jeff Hardy will become future world champions in the next um, decade, you know. You know, future WWE champions and future TNA world champions in their careers, you know. Because I think Jeff was in his, like, he started out his career as a teenager. I think he was around 19, 20. I was like, holy shit, man. He wrestled very young, Jeff Hardy, man. You know, yeah, he's doing it for Rob Van Dam, and it's funny that um, if he ended up proper signing with the company, the um, he debuted the following year in '98. So it's good to see what glimpses, what things to come. You know, um, I think like I watched a a squash match. You know, this was like '96 when our Steve Austin fought Matt Hardy. He was also a jobber. You know, he he had uh, some gigs with the Federation before he, there were actually actual guys on the roster. So. So, I'm going to talk about this, another inside of Dustin Rhodes, uh, I'm not going to go into it, why are they doing another one, I understand they're doing the, the Mankind interview segments, that's cool, but this is not necessary, you don't need to do two uh, inside segments of Dustin Rhodes, so basically it's sort of about what's next for Goldust, he brings up like, I'm going to keep it short and simple, I'm not going to go in details about, about it, so he brings about being more entertaining, you know, bring them more 100% of the character. The best thing happened in my life, you know, when Dustin, uh, what was it, Marlena, that's Terry Reynolds, by the way, doing the Goldust thing, you know, like, you know, and also he's doing with fucking Dustin, uh, like, sending the message to Dusty. I understand Dusty dies in 2015, I get it, but he's saying it like he's dying, I know he got a bit emotional, but he's saying it like, oh, like he's sending his um, uh, dad I love you, something like that, he's just saying it like he's dead, you know, because at the time Dusty was working with WCW, I don't, I don't understand why, you know, say self proclaimed that he broke away from his dad's shadow, it's kind of true, because he ended up, you know, Goldust is one of the best characters in pro wrestling, and um, I think, I feel like, and also, and also, Cody's starting to break out his dad's shadow. You know, he, you know, he's like, you know, both, both Dusty and, and Cody had good careers in WWE. Um, but um, anyway, so I don't know why they did this. It didn't do nothing for me. I like the first one way better, but this is not necessary, man. So that's just me. Let's move on. So um, did oh shit. Um, I think this is. Shit. I think this is, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot to write this down, but I'm going to talk about the Undertaker segment. Um, This was after he got attacked by the Nation of Domination, so <clears throat> he brings up to Paul Bearer the certain events occurring in the dark side. No, was it for reasons? It's on the, ah, shit, I had it. I fucking had it, man. It's like, I, you know, he said about like, uh, man, oh Jesus Christ! I had it, I fucking had it, man. Anyway, so he said about I I I remember like there's certain events uh occur to the dark side, no reason. The better off, yeah, the better off not to no to not remember or something. Um, uh, not remember. Right, I'm gonna move it on, and it's gonna drive me nuts, man. He said about Farouk says that I never fought with my physical um condition. I fought with my mental state of mind, um, he said, like, I'm gonna open the, um, the fault of, the assault, the fault of, the fault of souls to release the demon to help me battle with the nation of destruction, both of you will rest in peace, so about that, I, I try, I had that, I just, like, I had it, I, you know, I think it's, like, uh, no reason to left, I think it's left behind, um, but I can't remember, I had it, I'm moving on. You know, I got learning difficulties sometimes. Sometimes, when I'm reviewing it, reviewing these, um, reviewing a wrestling show or a movie or a TV show, I end up forgetting that line. I had it, and God, I, I don't, I don't had it. 
I think it was um something about no left behind something left behind no reasons um but I'm gonna move on man it's good it's gonna drive me nuts so it was a good promo by the Undertaker sorry about that man it's just you know it's I had it and it, I I should have wrote it down. You know, I try to do it with the heart, you know, write the matches down, promo segments, but, you know, let's move on to the Fatal 4-Way. So, this is a Fatal 4-Way for whatever reason, so, you got Owen and Bulldog taking on the Headbang the Headbangers, um, the New Blackjacks, and, Dirk, what was it, Phil Lafon and Doug Furness, so, mediocre as fuck, so the first tag team got eliminated was, um, Furnace and Lafon, and then they went on to help um, to eliminate. I think they eliminate both um, the Blackjacks. You know, helping the Heg Banners eliminate the bla the new Blackjacks. The new Blackjack. One of them is the future JBL. You know, future member of the Acolytes. You know, with um, with Baruch, the APA, and then and then the future WWE champion JBL. Anyway, the final two tag teams are Owen and Bulldog and the Heg Banners. In the end, Owen and Bulldog got the victory. Um, I think Bulldog hit the running power slam onto, I think it was Marsh or Thrasher for for the win. And then afterwards, and then you got Art, Bret Hart came out. He basically, you know, asked the rest of the Hart Foundation to leave. And he said, like, to Austin, like, if you go near me, he's going to re release his pack of lions to rip you to shreds. Because Austin is the rotten, stinking hyena. And then he kind of like um, calls out Shawn Michaels, and once again, and Bret was all trashing the Americans like you like blood and violence. You think you're you you know better that you know best no better than ah, shit. I hide it, man. Fucking hell. Sorry about that, folks. He said like you think you're better than other people around the world, referring to the American wrestling fans. And towards Shawn Michaels, you're, you're, pose, you're in posing magazines and tattoos, you know. And he said about, like, you bring my family, bring about all my, the almighty dollar. Who owns the almighty dollar? I'm trying to get to the key points, by the way. So, otherwise, Jesus Christ, I get pissed off. I had it, and sometimes I don't have it. It's just what it is. My apology. Go with the flow. Anyway, so he brings about, like, you... You know, brings up, like, that, you know, you never face me like a man. Brings up, like, their match at WrestleMania 12. You know, the Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12 with the World Wrestling Federation title. It brings up, you didn't have the balls or never had the guts to face me. You know, and also Austin, in his promo earlier, says, if you had the guts to face me. He didn't say you didn't have the balls to uh, face me. Otherwise, I think they could end up, like, I think they're not allowed to swear because they is a PG-13, this is before the Attitude Era, anyway, so, he brings out never had the chance to face me at WrestleMania 13, because the area goes in real life, because Supper Clay and Sean faked the knee injury, he doesn't want to do the job to Brett, you know, get Brett get his win back at uh, WrestleMania 13, so, I try to keep it short and simple, folks, so, and he also says about your taking off his coat, co he took off his coat off, that's, um, Sean, by the way, he said about your hot and cold, sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're not, referring to his career, uh, and also, they kind of went off the air, that is bullshit, you know, that, I watch it right now, this is 2002, when I watched this episode Raw, but, in, I'm better, in 1997, when it says, you know, the, it says, not, the end credits, not end credits, but saying like, Raw, copyright, blah, 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 you know, I bet people were pissed off, but, um, they continue, it looks like, after the aftermath, it looks like it was after the end. The show was aired, and also, I think Brett, friend to t attack him, says you don't have the guts. And Sh Sean, he didn't really say anything. He didn't really like cut a promo, but um, he kind of switching music. Oh, Brett, and then the rest of the Heart Foundation trying to go after Sean. Sean trying to trying to escape, but the numbers the numbers game kind of catch up with Sean. Heart Foundation beat down. Sean in on the stage, drag him to the stage, Tillman hit uh Sean with the crutch. Then Austin <clears throat> came to the rescue because they're about to throw Sean Michaels off the stage. Austin came to the rescue and then that was the end of it. So yeah, overall I give it a seven out of ten, a decent Monday Night Raw, but um the matches, wow, a lot of squash matches. You know, 
if you do it once or twice in one show, I'd be I'll be okay with it. But every squash match on this show, it's like Jesus Christ, like let fresh out the match, you know, like flesh it out a bit. So it's more of the promo segments than the actual uh, wrestling itself. You know, I feel like I like the Brett's promos, I like Austin's promo, I like Mankind's promo, I like Farouk's promo. It's just a night of promos than wrestling. You know. You know, I understand, you know, Raw is, you know, an entertaining show. You know, Nitro is more for its traditional wrestling and less of the sports entertainment side. I get it, so. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this episode. And by the way, um, next time, the next episode, I might remember, if I miss, like, a promo from any Raw, I might, I might bring it up at the next review to recap, you know. Sorry about it, I don't remember the Undertaker promo. But it's just, uh, it's a good promo, by the way, you know, he's a good promo, The Undertaker, but just like, it's it's like, I had it, and then it's like, oh, I had it. You know, it's just, it's just what it is. So anyway, so I hope you enjoy, enjoy this review, folks. Leave your thoughts in the below, smash the like button, click the bell, click the like, subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube, be part of the Central Unit for more wrestling videos and more. And this is the Central Man officially signing out. Check you later, folks.